So my name is um, Shalini Ghosh, and I'm actually um, from um, Research Scientist at SRI International. Uh, but this work was done with my colleagues um, in Google Research uh, when I was visiting them, um, and over a course of a year. So, um, so this is called contextual LSTMs, and um, a step towards um, hierarchical language modeling. So, so uh, sorry, we're not able to put the presentation on full screen. So we're having some issues with the Mac display. So, so sorry about that. Um, so um, what we, the title of the talk is Contextual LSTMs. And um, it, the reason is that we wanted to explore how can we incorporate context into uh, language modeling. So um, our previous presenter was talking about using convolution neural nets for uh, text modeling. And we will get into uh, long short-term memory models, which is called LSTMs. And we show um, a modification on LSTMs where we incorporate context in the form of topics into the model. So, so why, why is, um, what is the motivation for our work? So if you look at um, an example um, uh, from here. So if you um, had a, so usually a document has a uh, sentence, and then you have sections, and you have paragraphs. And um, often a language models, typical language models, they take into account uh, you know, the probability distribution of over sequence of words. But uh, we want to see, can we incorporate sort of uh, these kind of uh, uh, topics, say, uh, of that we can get from paragraphs, uh, from sentences, into the language model? And what kind of improvement do we get? So, and the motivation is that suppose if you knew, so consider these three snippets, right? Um, and suppose you want to predict what is the next word following the word magical? Um, is it realism? Is it property? Is it music? Now, if you knew at, that at the beginning of the paragraph, you're talking about, say, Sir uh, Salman Rushdie, and they knew that he is related to magical realism and not magical property or music. So you have an easier time figuring out what the next word should be if you're trying to predict the next word. And um, as I mentioned that there are various ways of capturing context, and one of the ways that we thought that we can capture context is through, is through topics. And the idea was to capture long range, richer context in a language model. Now, uh, what uh, so I already mentioned that we are looking into a particular, so there are language mo different kinds of language model. The re in the recent times, one of the popular ones is this long short term memory or LSTM models. And uh, usually LSTMs have shown that in very complex domains like speech and vision, they've done pretty well. So we were trying to make use of LSTMs um, in, the, uh, in the text domain and see can, if we can do better. And we introduced this new model called contextual LSTMs. So what task did we focus on? So we focused on three different tasks. One was the, the canonical word prediction task. So we say, given the words that we've seen so far, we want to predict what's the next word. And um, the next task was, suppose um, if you have next sentence selection. Now, this kind of task can be quite important for um, things like, say, um, uh, dialogue systems, like you, you have given the context that you've seen so far, you want to select what's the next response going to be. And that, is, that was the motivation for our work. Um, we see that give, so given a sequence of sentence, formally, this task is find the most likely next sentence from a candidate set of uh, sentences. Uh, and the third task is actually topic prediction. So given words and topic of the current sentence, we want to predict the topic of the next sentence. So graphically, this is what this means, that for the word prediction task, given that the words we've seen so far, we want to predict the next word. For uh, our next sentence selection, uh, we say we've given the words that we've seen so far, we want to pick which is the most ne likely next response. And the topic prediction. So in topic prediction, one thing to mention is that this is the usual, um, the topic prediction task that we consider is harder than the normal topic prediction task. Because in to usual topic prediction task, you see the words of the sentence and you're trying to predict the topic of that sentence. But here we are saying, what if we actually 
know know about the know the words you know that we've seen so far and we want to predict the topic of the upcoming say response or utterance that is very common in things like dialogue systems so that's the kind of um, topic prediction model we are considering here so next so as i mentioned we used long short term memory models and uh, as our base and then we actually improved on it by introducing context so um, what are lstms um, these are actually a kind of recurrent neural networks and they're very useful in capturing long range dependencies um, also the power uh, the power of lstms lie in the fact that they can remember the states for a very long time and in, you can think of lstms as a sort of that it models digital memory in neural in a neural, in neural network and uh, the interesting thing is that an lstm is actually the power comes from the fact that sort of um, it is trained explicitly to remember a value unless it is explicitly signaled to forget that uh, value so this is a sort of a, a box diagram of a lstm um lot of course is sort of hidden uh, under the rugs in this diagram but uh, you see um that given if you're giving a word and then this is what it, there are hidden layers you know and this is what it outputs and you see the sequential behavior you know in this model and at each time step what the lstm computes is what is the probability of word uh, of the next word uh, given the words that you've seen so far uh, this is a more uh, you know for a, but one each of these pink boxes that you see here uh, now if you look at this this is actually lstm cell and each of this lstm cell is actually modeled this way through a set of equations and we don't have time um, to go into the equations but um, just it suffices to say that we have an input gate a forget gate and a memory and an output gate and we also have the memory cell and the output and this is the structure now um, what we do is that in the structure we actually for the clst modification we try to incorporate topic so what where does the topic come from it could be a topic you know from the words that you've uh, up to the words that you've seen so far what is the topic and we have a we have computing that i'm going to get get into that or it could be the topic of the uh, paragraph it could be the topic of the uh, previous sentence so we we explored various kinds of hierarchical features for our work and uh, uh, but for each of these words like the topic is essentially added as a, as a weighted term to each of these equations in the um, LSTM, um, uh, the basic cell modifications that we do. And uh, this is the weight. And of, um, and of course, one of the reasons that this is feasible now, once we have these, um, the weighted terms added, is that this is actually in the, in the disbelief or the uh, network in Google that we implemented this, this amounted to a concatenation operation. And that actually enabled efficient uh, implementation of such a uh, uh, model, because LSTMs by themselves are quite complex. And then we are making it more complex by adding this weighted term. So we had to make sure that it is actually implementable and it runs in, uh, you know, uh, uh, the training is actually tractable. Um, so this is um, the experimental uh, characteristics. So we, so one of the also the other problems we had was that we were uh, experimented with fairly large data sets. So we had the Wikipedia corpus, um, English corpus actually, and we had about 4.7 million documents. The vocabulary was about, and that was one of the challenges we faced was that uh, in the Wikipedia, we have a lot of unique words. So even after filtering, the uh, vocabulary size was about 130K. And that actually significant uh, put significant overhead on the training. Uh, and we had about 80% uh, of the data was training and 20% uh, uh, test. Uh, we also explored the Google News Corpus. And it, it also had about 4.3 million documents and a vocabulary size of about 100, 100K. Uh, now, where did the topics come from? Are we talking about the topics? So uh, Google has um, uh, this internal uh, clustering framework, which is based on um, Google Refill, which is also a published um, thing. But then, um, so we have this, uh, on top of the Refill framework, we actually built this kind of um, uh, way of extracting the topics, you know, from uh, given a sentence, given a sort of um, uh, paragraph, given a uh, uh, various kinds of features that you can input the text into and you get the topic out. And the topics are given in form of topic IDs. And uh, 
we uh, unfortunately cannot release the name of that, so it's for our purpose, let's call this um, HTM or hierarchical topic model that we implemented. And uh, it, um, as I mentioned that the implementation is all done in Google Disbelief framework, uh, which is a precursor to the TensorFlow. Um, so coming to the results, right. So the interesting thing was that um, what we saw was that we saw that for the word prediction model, uh, if we, our, ba our baseline was a LSTM model, and you know, um, of course the model we are looking at is the CLSTM model. And for the wiki uh, data, we saw that in, for the word prediction task, we're getting about 2% improvement. And, but now when we put, take, took this word prediction task and put it into, in a next sentence selection task, right? So because um, unfortunately that we cannot go into all the details, but they are there in the paper, which is also archived. Um, we, the way we set it up is that we look at, say, pa each of the, par we randomly sample, you know, paragraphs, say, from Wikipedia. And say there are four sentences. So we, look, so we look at, you know, three sentences that we've seen so far. And now we're trying to say, okay, what is the fourth sentence? So we prepare a candidate set of se um, sentences, um, and there's about one in 50. So the task is that can you select one out of 50. And those 50 are randomly selected from anywhere else, other parts of Wikipedia. And so the idea is can you actually exactly get the right sentence or not? Uh, otherwise, you don't uh, score. So word prediction task, you know, it was me measured in terms of perplexity, whereas this next sentence prediction task is measured in form this form of accuracy. And the interesting thing was that we got about 21%, you know, um, gain on the Wikipedia data set. And we got about 18% uh, gain in uh, news. And we ran this on multiple, you know, runs, so to make it statistically significant result. And in the topic prediction task, um, the harder version of it, where we're trying to predict the topic of the next sentence, given what we've seen so far, we actually see that uh, in Wikipedia, we actually get about 17% gain, as opposed to a normal LSTM. And we also did, by the way, with bag of words, and, um, uh, and we got also about uh, 11 or 12% gain. I don't have time to go into that, but the results are there in the paper. And we also, for the Google News data set, we have about 9% gain over a normal LSTM. So, uh, so what are these applications? So there's various applications. The word prediction task is actually can be used for things like sentence completion task that we see in our um, phones uh, these days so often. Uh, it can be, we have the, for the next sentence selection, apart from dialogue systems, which I already mentioned, uh, another application area is actually question answering. Like you, uh, you want to um, select the best response. Um, and also, I already mentioned dialogue systems, and a lot of this work is actually um, motivated by the work I was doing previously with, uh, in di with dialogue systems in Google. And uh, the last one is actually paraphrase you know, generation, and we have also sort of explored, um, I mean, we did also experiment with that, and we have some results which uh, we uh, could not publish. Uh, so, but uh, why does CLSTM work? And uh, this is just one example, um, and this is where, um, um, as we are concluding, is that uh, this, if you look at um, these sentences, right, sentence A, B, C, and our job is to find out what's the next best sentence D, say, right? So one of the reasons that the LSTM uh, does not get this right, whereas CLSTM gets, gets it right, is because of these HTM IDs that I talked about, right? If you look at the HTM IDs that came out, uh, you know, uh, what happens is that we get 294, 294, that's the HTMID if you look at the, uh, the topic for each of these sentences, right? And so now, hence, we know that we should be in the topic soccer, right? That's the HTMID. So, so what is happening is that the CLSTM model is biasing, right, the model such that apart from the words, it's taking the topic into account while it's, when it's making the prediction. And hence, it gets the next prediction. Uh, it, is, it is doing this word-by-word -word prediction and constructing what is the most likely next sentence. And we have a detailed formulation in the paper about the probability model that we use to make such a prediction. Um, and, this is, um, and this bias is actually uh, helping the CLSTM over LSTM uh, in making such predictions. And of course, there are lots of key, uh, related work. We don't have time to get into that. But to our knowledge, none of these models explore the use of these kind of long-range contextual sort of um, signals, like sentence level or paragraph level topic for text analysis using the LSTM like sequence model. And uh, that's the main thing. And, and future work 
you know, we have many possibilities, and uh, I'd love to know more from you. What do you guys can th uh, think? Thank you. How do you choose the reset? Uh, is it automatically chosen, or is it something that uh, you learn? I mean, you mean the forget gate? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so no, so that's something which the LSTM automatically learns. That's the power of LSTM, yeah. 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 So basically, uh, wh when you are tracking th uh, topics that may be confounding, and you, you are allowing it for, for the bias, how does it, uh, how do you know you'll converge to the right topic? Oh, how do you know it converge to the right topic? Uh, the topic is coming from extraneous model, right? And this is just going in as a feature. So unfortunately, it was too short a talk. Right. But 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 I think what we're doing is that for each of this, for this, for, so for example, let's go back to the cartoon diagram that we had. Um, so here in a normal LSTM, right, you have you usually don't just have the word going in. So in this case, you have the topic which is coming from extraneous source, and we're putting that topic throughout this um, uh, along with the word, you're just concatenating that as a, another feature. That's all. The last question. Yeah. yeah. yeah so uh, from the slide that you show the context LSTM, uh -huh. uh, can you go to that slide? Is so the so from which one? the slide that you show the configuration of the context LSTM. This one? Yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just a concatenation of the, so WX plus WT is just, if you can just concatenate the features from the word and the topic. So is this just just concatenation of the features? So it's not a new configuration, right? Uh, so so what happened that we thought of it as a new configuration. Uh, we implemented that as a concatenation because uh, the reason is because uh, we initially thought that we actually are going to uh, made the change to the each of the gates, actually. And we will learn, so uh, mo the, actually the, uh, what the configuration is with respect to, if we incorporate us as a, in each of these gates, as opposed to just a concatenation of the features. But uh, finally, we decided to implement that as a concatenation of the, in the feature space, because they're mathematically equivalent. But at the same time, you know, the implementation was much easier. And, and one of the motivations for that is that we were thinking of actually having a hierarchical model. And in the, the paper finally talks about that hierarchical model. And we started uh, experimenting with that. It's what is called thought vectors. So we incorporate topics in the form of what are the, what are the, what are the, what is the context which is coming from a previous, you know, sort of sentence that we've seen so far. And, you know, like, so Jeffrey Hinton has actually uh, concretely this uh, sort of uh, coin this term you know uh, thought vector i'm sorry can we actually put this as a th thought vector into each of these cells actually so these are the some of the experience we have in the paper we don't get to talk about yeah. thanks thank you thanks. very much thanks